السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Nifin Sif al-Islam I'm a lecturer in radio diagnosis department I hope you all are doing well Our topic today is about introduction to GI radiology We divide GIT into upper and lower tracts Upper tract consists of oral cavity, oropharynx, esophagus, stomach and duodenum while the lower GIT consists of small bowel and large bowel. The small bowel is 6 meter section of bowel. The small bowel begins at the stomach at the gastroduodenal junction and it's at the cecum at the ileocecal junction. It consists of duodenum, jejunum and ileum and also anatomically duodenum is part of the small bowel but clinically when we mention small bowel we mean jejunum and ileum. As you can see here, the jejunum marked by blue line uh, occupies upper part of the abdomen and inclined more to the left side, while the ileum, um, highlighted by the green line, located in the lower part of the abdomen and inclined more to the left side. The small bowel have a characteristic appearance, secondary to the mucosal folds called valvuli convents and give the curve <clears throat> about the large bowel it's much more shorter than the small bowel it measures 1.5 meter of muscular tube um, it resembles an inverted u-shape started from the cecum which is an, uh, colored by yellow at right iliac fossa <coughs> sorry and then extend cranially and pink to form the ascending colon till the lower hepatic surface to form the hepatic flexure followed by transverse colon in orange to which traverses the abdomen uh, transversely to the hepatic to the splenic flexure at the lower surface of the spleen and then the sand in the form of the sanding colon in orange and then forming the sigmoid colon in purple followed by the rectum or the anal canal and anal canal in green it also has a characteristic appearance secondary to the tinea coli the tinea coli is longitudinal muscular band on the surface of the uh, uh, of the colon, which is shorter um, than the colon by 30 cm. It's the cause of characteristic hostria or circulation uh, of the large colon, which gives a characteristic appearance in plain X-ray. <clears throat> Technique of examination. Uh, it had been discussed before, but let's revise, please. We have plain radiography. Um, plain x-ray of the abdomen, KUB and earth. It's a uh, simple, easy, non-invasive and available, so it's the first modality of studying. Uh, contrast study, uh, like, <coughs> sorry, barium swallow, barium meal, follow through, enema, according to the organ we need uh, to examine. For esophagus, it's called barium swallow, for stomach, um, contrast meal or barium meal, according to the contrast used, for uh, small intestine, follow through, for large intestine, it's called enema. Of course, for uh, esophagus and um, stomach and small bowel, we depend on the patient to uh, drink the, um, the contrast orally. While for the large bowel, we inject uh, the contrast through an enema through the anal canal. We have also abdominal and pelvic ultrasound, CT of the abdomen and pelvis, CT and MR, Entography, CT, colonography, or virtual colonoscope, which give a picture uh, resembling to the um, endoscopy but with no invasive procedure. Evacuation proctogram or defecography to assess the physiology of defecation, uh, to assess the anal canal and uh, anal sphincter musculature responsible for defecography. The plain radiography, as you can see, we have two positions, supine and erect. Uh, and here is the gas distribution um, within the abdomen. Uh, we have the um, gas in the stomach and the left hypochondrium and the inverted U-shape with characteristic circulation at the periphery of the abdomen, uh, the, gas, the gas of the colon, and a few loculi of air in the center of the abdomen resembling um, gas in the small bowel loops. So, uh, contrast study of the GIT, as we mentioned before, uh, for esophagus, it's called contrast swallow for stomach, uh, contrast meal 
for small intestine contrast follow through for large intestine contrast enema as a contrast use we can use barium as a suspension or gastrographene as a water soluble here is a picture of the barium sulfate which is powder and we dissolve it in a water or fluid and we have here the gastrographene the first picture here let's resemble that um, the two red lines are the wall of the uh, bowel and the center is the lumen of the bowel which is filled with air this is a plain study no contrast at all in the other two pictures there is a contrast study the first one is single contrast and the other one is a double contrast and the red line are the wall and the white line is a contrast sorry the white area is a contrast totally opposifying the lumen here is a single contrast while in double contrast there is a contrast making thin film lining the mucosa with air in the center here is a picture of a single contrast and double contrast single contrast with a contrast totally opacifying the lumen as double and double contrast where the contrast um, making only thin film of contrast delineating the wall of course the double contrast if there is a minute lesion or minute ulcer within the wall will be demarcated by the contrast as it will accumulate within this tiny abscess okay to detect any abnormality you should first know what is the normal appearance of the bowel the small intestine here's a picture of the barium falls through and here's a plain x-ray in the earth and spine position and the brain falls through as you can see here the caliber and the smooth outlining and the valvulic connivance of mucosal folds and here in the erect and supine position of course in supine position the, um, the gas within the lumen will lumen will fall all over the bowel in the center of the abdomen and the erect the air will float cranially and the fluid within the bowel will make to some sort um, air fluid level to some extent it will be accepted this is an erect position enlarged bowel here is the first image of double contrast as you can see the contrast making thin film delineating the wall and the gas in the center and the other two picture of plain x-ray and erect with the air fluid level which is accepted here and and supine which making an um, inverted u-shaped uh, gas with characteristic circulation of large intestine okay any deviation from the normal will be a pathology let's check pathology we have the first we have to comment on the course caliber contour filling and evacuation and mucosa lining okay the first picture as we mentioned before we were First, we will have intestinal obstruction. This is a picture of intestinal obstruction, small bowel obstruction in spine and erect position, multiple dilated bowel loops. As you can check here in the supine and erect, there is dilated caliber. The valvular contents are more visible. There is no gases in the large bowel. The air fluid level are more in number and more in different levels here one two three four five much more in number and much more in level so in most cases the abdominal radiograph will have the following feature dilated loops of small bowel of course proximal to the obstruction valvi conference are more visible and air fluid level of course if the patient of the study is erect we ask the patient to stand or sit for maybe 30 minutes before the examination to allow the air to float cranially second pathology we have Crohn's so this is a picture of Crohn's it's um, have a lot of um, signs so first what's the meaning of Crohn's it is each basic inflammatory bowel Unfortunately, there is no specific etiology until now. It's characterized by 
widespread discontinuous gastrointestinal tract inflammation, the terminal ileum and proximal colon are the most commonly affected. What's the sign we can detect? A lot of signs. Second fold due to edema, nodular pattern secondary to submucosal edema and inflammation, filiform polyposis, mucosal alteration, widely separated groups of bowel due to fibro fatty proliferation, scap lesion, string sign, fibrosis, and scarring. Okay, um, let's describe each one, please. Here, the first one, string sign. As you can see, there's a string sign. What's the meaning of string sign? Okay, string sign is tubular narrowing, secondary to spasm or structure according to the chronicity of the disease. And this image represents the pseudo circulation, which is here, pseudo circulation and creeping of the fat in between. So pseudo circulation or pseudo diverticula, secondary to contraction, on at the site of the ulcer with ballooning of the opposite side and creeping of the fat, widely separated loop of the bowel due to fibro fatty proliferation. Of course, there is a skip lesion, normal and followed by abnormal, uh, abnormal loops. Ulcers, Crohn's have many ulcers. And here is a mucosal ulcers. Uh, there is a many types of ulcer in Crohn's. Abscess ulcer, which is minute and very small. Deep ulcer, more than 3 mm in depth. Longitudinal fissure, transverse straps. Uh, if it's severe, it will lead to cobblestone appearance and may lead to sinus tract and fistula. We will um, describe the cobblestone appearance now. And there is also polyposis called thyliform polyposis. Let's see uh, the image. Here is the cobblestone, secondary to fissured ulcer around inflamed mucosa, giving the characteristic appearance of the cobblestone. And here is the filiform polyposis. This is a picture of filiform, of the filiform. And here is the polyposis at ours. It resembling filling defect. And here is the featureless bowel. Although it is not characteristic for the Crohn and it is not the most common uh, sign of Crohn, but it can present the bowel lose its personality. There is no uh, specific feature of the um, of the mucosal. False. Third pathology we have is polyposis. What's the meaning of polyposis? It's a mucosal outgrowth. Mucosal outgrowth prevents the contrast to totally opacify the lumen. There is a part is not opacified by the contrast falling defect. This is a picture of polyposis. There is a total opacification of the lumen by the contrast apart from this multiple small filling defects this picture as the first picture with a uh, single contrast and the other one with double contrast as you can see the um, barium uh, or the, the fourth pathology is diverticulosis so what's the meaning of diverticulosis it's chronic diverticulosis referred to the presence of multiple diverticula which is out pouching of the whole of viscous as we mentioned before the contrast is escaping outside the lumen, but still delineated by the lumen. There is diverticula. As you can see here, the contrast is totally opacifying the bowel, but there is small loculi of contrast flying beside the bowel. It is diverticulum. Here in a negative study, you can see the diverticulosis the outpouching from the lumen, sorry, uh, from the wall. Here's another picture of single contrast and double contrast and uh, the fifth pathology we will have is harsh spraying disease it's most common cause of neonatal colonic obstruction it's commonly characterized by short segment of colonic agangulinosis affecting neonates the affected segment is of a small caliber with proximal dilatation fasciculation or sawtooth irregularity of the affected segment is frequently seen and transition zone will be detailed, like here. You can um, recognize the difference in caliber between uh, both the normal and the affected. Uh, here also you can detect the difference in caliber. 
another short segment of and finally the bad guy the cancer colon unfortunately it's the most common cancer of the GIT and second most frequently diagnosed malignancy in adult there is market filling defect it gives a characteristic appearance of apple core appearance as there is mass here and mass here so the contrast will fill proximal and distal to the mass with thin tract or um, thin tract passing in between um, the mass will give the characteristic upper core appearance. This is another picture of upper core appearance or cancer colon as you can see in other pictures both show barium, enema, single contrast showing uh, upper core appearance characteristic for cancer colon uh, this one was double contrast double contrast and single contrast uh, single contrast and this one is extensive here in the CT there is circumferential thickening of the bulb um, finally I hope the lecture is understood and thanks for your time, thanks for your effort, please stay at home and stay safe, thanks a lot.